1995, a strange phenomenon was observed that is believed to explain how some animals colonize islands. Three weeks after a pair of hurricanes passed through the Caribbean, a cluster of trees washed up on the shores of the island of Anguilla. Several iguanas were riding on this makeshift raft. Although the green iguana is found naturally on some other Caribbean islands, it had previously been absent from Anguilla, with only its close relative, the Lesser Antillean Iguana, being present on the island. The iguanas are believed to have originated from the French territory of Guadeloupe, as it was in the path of the hurricanes. Additionally, sea currents in its vicinity flow northwest towards Anguilla. Though there was some skepticism regarding whether they would survive, the iguanas were able to establish a lasting population and are now even endangering their aforementioned relative. What these iguanas did is significant, as it was the first time that humans observed a successful rafting event. Rafting has long been thought of as a means for smaller animals to colonize other landmasses when incapable of flying or swimming long distances. The common ancestor of Old World and New World monkeys is believed to have rafted across what was once a much narrower gap between Africa and South America, leading to two distinct, geographically isolated lineages of monkeys. Regarding islands, however, Charles Darwin famously suggested that the animals native to the Galapagos Islands were offshoots of animals found on the South American mainland. The ancestors of many of these must have arrived on the islands by rafting. Because some animals are obviously too massive to ride vegetation, smaller, isolated islands such as Easter Island tend to be devoid of large terrestrial animals, excepting those that man introduced. But for those places not quite as isolated, larger animals have alternative methods of establishing a presence. It is known that North America and Asia were once connected by a land bridge, allowing animals such as the woolly mammoth to cross between the two continents. But land bridges can explain animals' presence in other areas as well. The thylacine, or Tasmanian wolf, was not only found on Tasmania during prehistory, but also on mainland Australia and New Guinea. Because the three formed a continuous landmass when ocean levels were lower, thylacines were able to establish themselves on Tasmania before it was separated from the mainland. A similar situation occurred in Britain. Larger mammals such as deer and bears were able to colonize the island when it was a peninsula of mainland Europe during the Ice Age. One of the more unique cases of an animal colonizing an island involves the now extinct Falkland Islands wolf, the Falklands were among the most remote islands on Earth that possessed a native canine, and were not normally connected to the South American mainland during the Ice Age. It is believed that during this time, a narrow underwater strait was closer to the ocean's surface, which would sometimes freeze over, forming an ice bridge that allowed the wolves to cross over to the islands. So in the end, humans are not the only animals capable of reaching new lands.